people are crushing it there and like you so much opportunity comes that you know if you display like and you like show your accomplishments and what you've done like you can make so much opportunity to just comes migrating your way that like i i feel like i lose there you know what i mean kind of being secluded and not telling people what i do or what i've done uh but then in the same side you know it also kind of keeps me like out of the drama and out of some bs you know Right. Because a lot, an issue that I run into a lot now is that I'm so open with what I'm about, like the e commerce thing and everything mm -hmm. on YouTube. That nowadays, if I meet anybody, like say I meet a, this, this is a true story. Say I meet like multiple people at like a wedding, like my friend's wedding, mm -hmm. and we're getting along and then they learn what I do. Now I'm in a very tough spot because I, I've seen this play out many times. We're going to get along, they find out what I do, and then it's dropshipping question, dropshipping question after dropshipping. How question. can you help me? Exactly. You know what I hate? I'm gonna I just want to take this time and say it. And everybody's situation is different, but I hate when people ask me for help. And I'll tell you why. Nobody helped me. So like if I can do it, and I'm not any smarter than anybody, I, I like I attribute my success to the fact that I was just more focused and worked hard. But like people like dude. I was literally fulfilling drop shipping orders. I was looking at the Shopify. Look, this is how like this is how bad this was. I was taking the order and I was typing the address in like Amazon. Like I was typing it physically. Like my first like hundred and my first like three hundred orders on like, Amazon. Like I would a, 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 Amazon AliExpress whatever was sold. Like I was just like screenshotting. I, again, there was no Burlo. I didn't know a Burlo. Like when I found out a Burlo, it was like, it solved everything. It like blew my mind. Like the one bottleneck in the business that I thought was like, oh my God, like I'm, <laughs> I can't, this is not scalable typing in these addresses. I don't know why I didn't just Google search it. I guess like a little negligent, naive there. But I mean that, that like to me really like I knew nothing like, you know what I mean? Right. And so like, I'm obviously, I love to collaborate and, you know, obviously I have a mutual beneficial, a mutually beneficial relationship with people. But like, I hate when people ask for help, like you can ask for help. And I, and like, I love helping, but like, dude, like some people will just be like, yo, can't even, how do I open a Shopify store? It's like, man. Well, my theory on that is when they message you, Hey, can you help me start a Shopify store? Right. And I, and like I said, I've seen this, thousands of times my theory on that is the only reason they're asking that question is because deep down they know you're not going to respond to that right like they know that but you not responding to it now gives them a perfect excuse for why they couldn't make it or they can't try well he never responded to me like fuck now what am i supposed to do it's just like you said no one helped me at all people will dm me asking me for money and everything right i'd like i just never was in that mental space when i needed money i moved out here and became an uber driver and you know how you were talking about how like you're like i can't quit there's no way i can quit like this is it i was the same way only i quit in the summer to move out here mm -hmm. and the same store i quit on is the exact same store i started three months later same product same ad same everything i just learned facebook ads through facebook groups better taught mm -hmm. myself yeah and that's what that was my first successful store hundreds of thousands of dollars so i gave up on something that was about to work wow so that's what i i love telling that to people just because like people want to give up and they have no clue that right when they're giving up, like if, if I didn't give up, I would have never had to become an Uber driver. I would have just moved out here and be, you know, started getting into digital marketing. But right. Because I gave up, I went ahead and did that. The giving up is the, is when people DM me and stuff and they'll ask me like, look, help me or whatever. I will literally respond. Like they'll ask me like, yo, just like, give me a tip. And I literally tell them, don't give up. That's yep. it. That's the only tip I can give you. Because if you don't give up and you like get up every day and you work hard and you focus and you're determined and you're like locked in, like, okay, it might take you three months, it might take you six months, it might take you five years, but it's going to happen. You know what I mean? It's about being persistent. Like people think that like rich people are like, I, I, I might not know the notion and I don't want to speak for people, but it's like kind of like the sentiment that like, oh, like luck and like none of that is like it's hard work dude and it's just like being persistent and if you just be persistent at your craft and like what you're focused on the rest is going to fall together like so many things like are different like oh somebody told me one time and i kind of got offended because like they might not have known but like you were really lucky meeting patty because obviously like i was making money uh but like patty like once we did the patty stuff like that kind of scaled me to like a whole nother realm of where like 
I now had the credentials and the numbers to be like, to walk into any room and be like, this is what I've done. Like, listen to me. And like the proof would back it up. But when I had, uh, what, what in that specific situation, the guy was like, you got lucky and people don't know. I'd sent Patty literally like 30 emails. There was like a certain time in my life where like, I was like, I had crashed my car, a couple things. And I was like digging into like my $5,000 that I told myself I would never touch. And I, at the time had an apartment and I was like young and I was like, shit, how am I going to figure this stuff out? And like, I knew I was selling clout goggles at the time on the gold cartel. And I knew Patty was wearing them all the time. I was like, dude, if this kid could, you know, wear these clout goggles, I know they'd go crazy. You know, in retrospect, in hindsight, it did. Uh, but I sent that kid 30 emails, literally 30 days straight, 30 emails. I knew that he would be the one. I just knew I had to get in contact with him. And he was, you know, at the time, a couple hundred thousand followers coming up, like they weren't checking their email. Uh, and then once we got in contact, the rest is history. But like that, that wasn't luck. Like I could have stopped after the second email. The last email I sent him, I remember it was a dissertation, dude. It was literally three pages long. It was huge. It was like breakdown. I was like, this is the potential. This is a screenshot to what I'm doing now. Like the whole, like, you know what I mean? Like it's not luck. Like, you don't know, it's persistence. It's resilience. It's honing in on my craft, having an objective, having a goal and working hard. Zero to a hundred million in my eyes is just hard work. You know, the rest and the billionaires and stuff, maybe they like have an extra IQ point or something, but to like get from zero to a hundred million, I really think it's hustle, it's focus, it's persistence and just being determined. Yeah, it's consistency, patience, and then a huge one is not letting your ego get in the way. That's a, that's a tough one, and that's one I'm battling with to this day. Now, a lot of the stuff that I might be talking about here, I still need to apply. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right. I'm not the most focused person. I'm not the most, uh, like, resilient person. Like, I'm not here working on my computer 12 hours a day like I should, taking it to the next level. I'm constantly distracted. And like you said, your ego, sometimes you'll... You'd be like, oh yeah, you know, things are good or I'm cool or, you know, whatever, whatever. But that's a really good observation and a really good point. Well, I see it a lot in people who want to start YouTube. They're like, yep. yeah, I love to start YouTube. I'm doing this, whatever, whatever. And then they hop on YouTube. They make 10, 20 videos. They don't break one. They don't get a video that breaks like 1000 views. And then they give up because they don't like their name being attached to videos that have a couple hundred views. For me, a couple, Foolish. a couple hundred views are great. You said like, I get the lucky thing at time. Like you're, you're so lucky to live you do, the way you do or what you're so lucky how that one video on YouTube pop. Well, what people don't see is I started YouTube when I was 10, right? A year after it was released. And my first video was 2008. I made about 350 videos until I was about 17. Then when I was no 16, then I got a busing job so I could work two years, gave up my high school, like social life. Cause I had to work two years to get chest surgery because mm -hmm. my insurance wouldn't cover it. I had, these, chest. I had these huge growths in my chest. They look like golf balls, literally like this. I can show you the picture later. And that, that taught me like, there's a goal, go after and get it. My parents are threatening to kick me out. If I got the surgery, all this crazy stuff was going on all while I'm like giving up the YouTube life, giving up high school, everything. But then I finally got the surgery and I remember the, uh, to go under like what the uh, anesthesia? anesthesia was 500 bucks. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'll save the 500 bucks. I'll just do it awake. So I did this shit awake. Like he, I, 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 this? I felt him drilling it. Like he had to do suction, like fat suction to get to it. And he had this pole literally scraped my, my breastbone and I'm awake. The only thing they gave me is like a stress ball to squeeze. And so that's what I mean by consistency. Like a lot of people never have that. I, I talked to this girl recently here and she's like, yeah, I'm just going to college. I never had a job before. And then we got on the, the topic of dishes. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I don't know how anyone could ever work in the in the restaurant industry. Like, I can't imagine rinsing off a plate. And I go, wait, have you never rinsed off a plate in your life? And she goes, no. I'm like, like, what do you mean? You know, what happens with your plate? She's like, oh, I just get a maid to do it. <laughs> and so it's like, you, you got, it, it comes down to what we're talking about. You have to be the one who does it. You can't just ask for handouts. You just can't ask. And some random opportunities and come to you. Yeah, I agree.